kanadští závodníci Isabel Brasier a Lloyd Eisner. Six years ago, the dream began here at the Sport Hall in Prague, site of the first international competition for Isabel Brasier and Lloyd Eisler. Their climb up the world rankings was meteoric. By 1990, silver medalists in Halifax, runners up again a year later in Munich. But reaching the summit has been a mission yet unfulfilled. Last year, two steps back. Their golden dreams at the Winter Olympics in Alberville turned to bronze. Hopes of mounting a comeback at the Worlds in Oakland were dashed by another third place finish. Undaunted, they're back in Prague, hoping a peak performance will at last bring them to the pinnacle of pair skating success. The 1993 World Figure Skating Championships from Prague in the Czech Republic are being brought to you by Petro Canada, dealers and their staff committed to Canadians. Bank of Montreal committed to being your full service bank. We're paying attention. The Dairy Bureau of Canada, who brings you butter, cheese, and other delicious dairy products. Ford of Canada, where quality is job one. It's working. Buy your local bottler of Diet Coke. Taste it. The taste of Diet Coke. Now, here is your host, Brian Williams. Tonight, on this surface at the Ice Hall here in Prague, the Czech Republic, two Canadians will try and repeat an event accomplished here 31 years ago. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Welcome to CBC's continuing coverage of the World Championships. Tonight, Brasseur and Eisler will try and follow in the footsteps of Defoe and Bowden, Wagner and Paul, Underhill and Martini, and, of course, Otto and Marie Jelinek pairs winners on this very surface 31 years ago. Also tonight, the men's technical program, the battle between Stoiko and Browning begins. Brian Orser told me last weekend in Toronto it's the most exciting matchup in men's skating since he went head-to-head -head with Brian Boitano in the late 1980s. A big night from Prague as we say good evening to Chris Cuthbert. Chris? Thanks, Brian. Good evening, everybody. You know it's a great night of skating when the warm-up act is Kurt Browning and Elvis Stoiko. We'll focus in more on Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler and their quest for gold a little bit later. But first... Browning and Stoiko. It was unforgettable in Hamilton, and like a high-stake poker match, they raised the ante here at the World Championships. Both looked very sharp in their qualifying earlier this week, and now they go to the technical program, where they'll try and get an edge on each other and the rest of the world. With their thoughts, let's join Barbara Underhill and Paul Martini. Well, Chris, nobody rises to the occasion like Kurt Brown. He's come here with two brilliant programs, and I've never seen him look more like a world champion. However, he has struggled with inconsistency here. That's something that Elvis has had no problem with at all. This is a head-to-head -head battle between Kurt and Elvis, but there are also several skaters here ready to take advantage of any mistakes in the technical program. Well, Barb, as excited as we are for Kurt and Elvis, the fact remains that the technical program has been a bit of a headache for the men here in Prague. Kurt and Elvis both missed the combination at the Canadians. Of the European contenders, Dmitry Dimitrenko was the only clean technical program at the Europeans. However, the Americans, Mitchell and Davis, both skated clean at the U.S. Nationals. All of these men realize that a mistake here tonight will virtually eliminate them from the precious metal hunt. There's no lack of ability, but it's the man who has the ability to stay cool under pressure who will come out on top. So let's go to the ice to see who can stay cool under pressure. Well, for Canada's bronze medalist, Marcus Christensen, the pressure really came in the qualifying round. He said he was worried that he wouldn't qualify because his parents had bought tickets to come to Prague to see him skate here. Well, he delivered with an eighth place performance in qualifying. Let's see if he can improve on that here. Triple toe. Thank 
job. Triple X double toe. And the men have, you know, the option is theirs. They can do a double, triple, or a triple, triple combination. It will be reflected in the technical merit mark. Great triple loop. I've never seen him look so confident. Even at the Nationals this year, he's gained confidence since then. It's like he really feels that he deserves to be here. Center, which is one of the things that the judges are looking for when they evaluate the spins here in the technical program. Final jump, the double axle. Is he on today? performance of a technical program at a world championship he's got to be mighty proud of that kurt browning likes it so does karen preston and the large canadian delegation here 22 years of age originally from toronto skating out of the royal planora club in edmonton marcus christensen here's a look at that triple x combination he's a little low on the landing but he pulls off the second double jump no problem and here's the triple loop that was just a beauty I came over on the bus with him before the competition. I couldn't get over how cool he was. He was just so calm, like he was actually excited to get out there. Well, he called the final flight in Hamilton overwhelming, and, and I'm sure it was a good experience because now he comes here and, and clearly has been in control of his emotions throughout the week. That's Jan Allmark, who is subbing for Christy Ness as a sure. coach this week. Christy's undergoing tests in Edmonton. Uh, nothing serious, but uh, he just said hi to coach back home. And everyone else in the Glenar. <laughs> Don't want to forget anybody. Uh, he had a less publicized back problem than Kurt Browning, but uh, everyone told me he only skated 17 yeah, days prior to the Nationals. Took off almost all of December, a part of November, but uh, certainly has played catch up. Well, I'm sure he's quite content with that performance. If he could have anything back again, he'd probably like to try that combination again to lay in a triple triple combination to garner some more marks, but a nice skate nonetheless. Well, you mentioned it might be reflected in the technical marks, and it has been, Paul. 4.7 from the Russian judge, 4.8 from Norway, up to a 5.3 from the American judge on the panel. Well, now that he's had both an excellent skate in the qualifying round and an excellent skate here in the technical, I'm sure he's going to be feeling really good going into the long program. And now the artistic marks come up, and uh, they are... Well, that's a very interesting set of ordinals. He's got a, a range from a first place uh, placement from the American judge all the way down to a fifth place from the Norwegian, but that's nice to see. Some artistic marks are higher and some are just the same. So an interesting set of marks for Marcus Christensen in his world debut with a judge's perspective on the spins we'll see in the technical programs. Here's Gene Sepp. Chris, in the men's technical...